feet and daylight unto my path. Unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and daylight unto a light unto my path. Welcome to Searchlight, a survey through Scripture with Pastor John Corson. It is our desire to bring you a systematic study of the entire Bible, chapter by chapter, book by book. Well, Abram, he was getting older, had no kids. And Sarai, Abram's wife, she had a handmaid, a little Egyptian girl named Hagar, Remember Hagar? Hagar. Mm, Yeah. They got her when Abraham led the family down to Egypt. Remember that whole story? Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I'm old. I'm barren. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. He said, Okay. So he takes this little Egyptian girl that day. Now, this was not some bizarre deal. This was a common custom in those cultures. That is, the cultures of Ur, of Babylon. If a woman couldn't have a child, she would offer her main handmaiden. And that handmaiden then would have relations with her husband. And the child they produced would be counted as the legitimate wife and the husband, you see. This was not some strange thing in the context of that day, from the culture from which they came. So she said, take, take Hagar. Take her. Abraham said, okay. He hearkens to the voice of his wife. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. Well, he went in unto Hagar, verse 4, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived... Hagar saw that she was pregnant. She then despised her mistress, Sarah. Her mistress, Sarah, was despised in her eyes. And Sarah, Sarai, the name means cutting, literally, sharp-tongued cutter. It'll be changed to Sarah, which means princess ultimately. But now she's sharp-tongued. Sarai said unto Abram, my wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid unto thy bosom, and when she saw that she conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Ah, the Lord judge between me and thee. She's ticked off at Abram. Amazing. Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, verse 6, Thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah dealt harshly with Hagar, Hagar fled from her face couple of things to note here. First, the problem. The problem is barrenness. Barrenness. The proposal was expedient, but not obedient. Sarah A.I., the wife, said, this is practical. This is expedient. Look, I'm getting older. I'm barren. You're getting older, too. But here's what you can do, Abram. It was expedient, but it was not obedient. It seemed logical. It was accepted culturally. It had merit intellectually. But it was a mess. It was expedient, but not obedient. Oh, my boy, Benny. My goodness, this guy, he amazes me, Benjamin does. He's 10. And it's really something because, you know, he's a rough and tough guy. He's got scars on his knee, and he's a top basketball player now, won the big school contest yesterday and going on to the next level of shooting and all the rest. He's a good athlete, and, and he's real rough and scruffy, when he's covered with mud all the time, you know, from football and all this stuff. He's really a rough, tough kid, but he's got this other side to him that just amazes me. He is unlike any of my other kids. He's, I mean, way different than PJ, my, my son, Peter John, because Ben is meticulous to a fault in some ways. We're working on that. I mean, everything in his room is always exactly, exactly where it's supposed to be. And he was real concerned when PJ came back because he knows that PJ doesn't live that way, Peter John. 
So he's, he, he, he was trying to plan for days how he could make his room look unclean. You know, now if I put this sock here, Dad, does that look unclean now? And he was trying to figure out the whole thing, see. I mean, truly, you open up any of his drawers in his desk, open up his bottom drawer where his pencils are, every pencil is totally sharpened and has to be pointed in the same direction. I mean, it's that kind of, he's just amazing. And he has things very well organized and completely clean and all that stuff. But he's real scruffy, too, in his, in his sports stuff. It's an interesting combination. And yet, you know, he's going through this thing where he wants so much to be right that he asks questions nonstop. He's always asking Tammy and I questions nonstop. Well, is it okay if, and is this right, and what about? And we're teaching Ben. And I said, Ben, a couple of weeks ago, I said, you know, Ben, I'm so proud of you for wanting things to be right. Because that's the way life was supposed to be. When God made Adam and Eve in the garden, he wanted Adam and Eve to ask him everything. That's why he said, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because if you eat of the tree of knowledge and good evil, you'll think that you know what's good. You'll know what's evil. And you won't talk to me, God was saying, essentially. I want you to walk with me, depend on me, stay close to me. And Adam and Eve had, Father, what about this? And Lord, what about that? But then when they ate of the tree, they were no longer in communication. Well, we know we're naked. Let's go hide. We know what to do. Let's make fig leaves. This independent knowledge puffs up, you see. So I said, Benny, it's so good. I'm so proud of you because you're living life in the way that it's meant to be. Constant questions. But Benny, Benny... Benny, start asking God, would you? <laughs> start. <laughs> Mom and I can't answer every question a hundred times constantly, moment by moment. You need, Benny, you need to do what you know to. I want you to pray. God will start talking to you. He'll sh- it's delightful what you're doing, Benny. Talk to the Lord. Okay, 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 he says. So the next morning he comes out. I've given this lesson to Benny, you know, the whole lesson about the Garden of Eden and how good it is what he's doing, but he needs to talk to the Father and learn to walk with God, you see, for getting those directions and answers. And so he comes out the next morning and he has this furrow on his brow. Mom, he says. Mom. See, Benny would always come out every morning and ask me if I was there or Mom, Tambo, where should I read? I want to read the right passage. What passage should I read today? because he has his devotions scheduled in from, from uh, 621 to uh, 643. His clock in his room is so funny. It has to be exact to the second. So Tammy has to go out to the front room where the TV set is and watch that channel where the clock is, you know, where it has the seconds. And, and they have to yell back and forth because Ben has to have his clock to the second. I mean, it's an amazing thing. So... It's the only clock in our house that's even close to being right. You know, every clock in our house is different times. I don't even watch it. And, and, and uh, he's got this clock. The, the one thing he discovered, it's too late for Christmas, but the one thing he really, really wants, they're 99 bucks and you order from, from this Danmark magazine, they're atomic clocks, and they're only one one millionth of a second off every 10 million years. They run on a radio frequency, and that's what he really wants. Oh, this would be great. Then I would know the exact time, you see. So... So Benny comes out, and he, and he says, you know, he always, well, where should I read? Where's the right place for me to read? So, so Tammy says, now, now, what did Daddy say last night? You pray about it. Okay, okay. So he, he prays, and then he comes out, like I was saying, with this furrowed look, and he says, the, the, my, I prayed, and the Lord told me, the Lord told me to read Nehemiah 16. So I turned there. There is no Nehemiah 16. <laughs> There's only 13 chapters in Nehemiah. What does this mean, he says? <laughs> Benny, you got to know, I had to say, Benny, you got to know, this is great because even if you think that you know what you should do or if somebody tells you what they think that you should do but it's not in the Word, don't do it. If it's not there, I don't care what you feel or what they say. If it's not in the Word, that's the lesson that God has for you today. If it's not in the Word, 
it's not there. It's not to be done, you see. That's the lesson for you. Okay, he says. <laughs> but it's really true, you know. Listen, I don't care how expedient something might be. If it's not in the word, it's not to be done. Period. Well, this makes sense. Take my handmaiden. But they didn't ask God. It's not in God's plan. That wasn't God's idea. It was Sarah's. It was expedient, but not obedient. And it turns out to do what? That was the problem, barrenness. The uh, proposal was Sarah's idea. The price, finally, what was the price? Double trouble. Trouble in the family. Trouble in the family and trouble in history. Because the child that's produced, Ishmael, causes trouble. Man, she, Sarah, looks at Hagar and is ticked off because Hagar is kind of lording it over her. Hey, 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 I've got the kid and you don't. And, ha <laughs> you know. And she goes to Abram, her husband, and she says, God judge between us. And Sarah is in Abram's face. It was her idea. This was her idea. And yet now she's ticked off and Abram just says, well, do what you want to do. Like I heard on the radio, Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud, at the end of his career, said this, and I quote, After 30 years of counseling, I have one question for women. What do you want? (laughs) And that's certainly what Abraham must have been feeling. What do you want, lady? This was your idea. I did what you told me to. Now you're saying God judge us and God judge between you and me and and my wrong be upon you and all the rest. What do you want? Do what you want to do. You know. Ah, There was problems and consternation and trouble in their family because, you see, ah, you can't serve two masters. You can't have two wives. You can't have two women or two men in your life. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It causes problems. You know that. And they found that to be true. In history, we're still paying the price. And then Isaac will come in the next chapter. The promised one. They're still at odds. They're still at each other's throats. And they always will be until the kingdom comes. The biggest problem in history is because of this event. Because they didn't do What God told them to, they did it on their own. They tried to help God out. They tried to cut the cocoon. They tried to give God a hand. They didn't wait on the Lord. And now there's still tensions in those lands. Problems, hatred, animosity, all stemming from this story, from this event. So what happens here? Abram says, do what you want to. Do do with her as you wish. And Sarai treats her harshly. Hagar, hit the road. You're out of here. And Hagar, you see, under the harshness, flees from Sarai. She runs away because this was Sarah's plan all along, to treat her so badly that she would flee. Now what happens next? The plot thickens. The twist and turns in the story are amazing. What now happens with Hagar is so surprising and mind-boggling And we'll look at it in our study next time. Let's pray, shall we? So many wonderful truths, Father, in these stories. So many practical pictures you portray. And I pray tonight that, Father, as we go our way, that we would realize that you are our shield and our reward. Father, I know I have a tendency to want to take something from you. In reality, what I'm craving is just simply you. And I pray for those tonight that are struggling, unhappy, wrestling with things, whatever it may be, that they would understand that it's you that they're ultimately desiring. That as they simply believe in you, that you do count it unto us for righteousness. That you will, Lord, come through and we just rest and quit struggling and trying to make it happen, chasing away the birds in our own energy, trying to go halfway and make deals with you. Father, I thank you that tonight we can just rest, knowing that, Jesus, you are going to come through all the way. In the meantime, I pray, may our faith be exercised 
Keep me, keep us, keep all that are in here tonight from the mistake that Sarah made and Abraham did in trying to hurry up the process, trying to help you out. Father, I pray that we would be those that wait patiently on you, trust in you, that even as we sang earlier, that, Lord, our help comes from you in your timing. Father, bless these people. Bless all who are struggling. May they take the story and understand. And may, may they be, a, even as Denny led us in that tune, may, they, may we be doers of the word. May we start tonight. So, Lord, we embrace the truth. We see the rightness of your way. We thank you for the provision of salvation and righteousness. And we bless you. And now as we go our way, I pray that these truths would stick with us and that your Holy Spirit would remind us that there would be applications made for each one of us. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you would like to have this complete teaching, you may order one from our website at johncorson.com. You may also call us toll-free at 888 888- and ask for the teaching from today's date. Again, that ordering number is 888-544-4858. You will also find on our website a variety of Pastor John's books, teaching packets, MP3 CDs, and other Bible study resources. Again, the address of the website is johncorson.com. Searchlight is an independent ministry that is not financially supported by any church or organization. We appreciate your prayers and support. May the Lord richly bless you.